Aksun Melikam Yena Tas Mai Sri Guru Venamaha Noa Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Pinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pasyat Yade Sarine Once you go to Rubis Chakri Pasindu Deva Chapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Gaur Bhaktarinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, one of the titles that we address the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, by is called Bhagavan. Uh, sometimes Bhagavan has been is used also for a very powerful person. Sometimes we say Bhagavan Narada or Bhagavan Shiva. But uh, it actually refers to Krishna, who is Bhagavan. In the Bhagavad Gita, we see. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Hmm. Bhagavan indicates a certain uh, definition of the absolute truth, which is unique to the absolute truth, which means one who is uh, full or complete in all six opulences. He has all beauty, all strength, all knowledge, all fame, all renunciation, and all beauty, strength, knowledge, renunciation, fame, and right. Right. strength. Did I say that? Oh, yes, beauty? Wealth. Oh, oh, wealth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's the richest. <laughs> okay. Now, in describing the absolute truth, we also understand that the living entity in the material world uh, seeks after one or more of these opulences that are found within Krishna in full. So we uh, find that people in this world have some wealth, some strength, some knowledge, and some are better than others in these categories. But the absolute truth is, means one who is complete or full and who is also the source of. So wherever knowledge, strength, wisdom, wealth, beauty, renunciation is seen, it has its source in Krishna. Therefore, it's called Bhagavan. Krishna is called Bhagavan. One is complete in all six opulences. Um, he is all famous. Uh, there are, there's the example we use to show that Krishna is famous is that um, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita more than 5,000 years ago. And that same knowledge spoken by Krishna is still talked about and discussed worldwide. So although it was spoken 5,000 years ago, Krishna is still famous for that person who spoke this uh, transcendental knowledge to his disciple Arjun. So he is the most famous where do we hear of someone who has done something 5,000 years ago that people are still following? We might remember something a person did 5,000 years ago, but generally nobody follows it anymore. <laughs> but people are following the Bhagavad Gita, and therefore he's the most famous. <laughs> uh, he's the most 
uh, knowledgeable because in that Bhagavad Gita, he gave the knowledge of the practice of devotion unto himself. He's the most knowledgeable. Whatever he speaks is accepted as truth. And whatever people hear, they also get benefit simply by hearing the knowledge he speaks. Those who apply the knowledge get greater benefit. And those who live that knowledge in their life get the maximum benefit. So Krishna is the most wisest. Uh, his memory is perfect. He knows past, present, and future. He's called Tri Kala Gyan. Tri Kala Gyan. He knows past, present, and future completely. No limit on the past, no limit on the future, everything in the present. He's present within the hearts of all living entities as Antaryamari, super soul. So he's not only knows everything, but he's still giving direction in the form of his personal association in the hearts of all living entities. Mm -hmm. um, when animals do something, um, those who study animals uh, say that because uh, it is a certain kind of instinct that is uh, inherent in that type of animal, that's why that animal acts in that way. But that's not true. That's just a word that's used that doesn't really describe anything. What is instinct? If it is instinct, accepting the definition that they give, but where does that instinct come from? <laughs> but we don't, we don't even accept the principle of instinct based on their own definition. But even if we do, still, where is the source of that instinct coming from? <laughs> Therefore, they can't explain it. But we say it's actually Krishna in the heart that directs the living entity in whatever body they have, especially in the in the uh, lower species of life, because mm -hmm. they they completely are under the control of Krishna in the heart, and they react and act according to that. Um, I so had a nice personal experience where I was in it was in New Rajadam in Hungary. <laughs> And I was, there's one kund there called Vishaka kund, and it's not too far from the temple. In fact, it's very close to the temple. And I would go out there in the morning to chant Japa. And there would always be this time of year that, that I was going, there were many birds. In fact, sometimes 50, 60, 70 birds all around the lake there. And sometimes they would be flying in a very, um, chaotic pattern, flying this way, that way, up, down, in and out. And sometimes they would fly so close to each other, it looked like that at any moment, there would be a crash. So I was watching the birds, how fast they were flying and how close to each other they were flying without any particular pattern in their flight. They were just going this way and that way. And then I was marveling at the fact that, you know, Krishna is directing each one of those birds in such a way that they don't come in contact with another bird and crash and then ultimately get hurt or even die because at the speed they're going it was quite, quite fast. So I was marveling at the fact that how Krishna in the heart is there and he's directing the living entities to act in a certain way, which is based on mostly on pre self-preservation for the low lower living entities. For us, he remains in the heart directing us towards what is our best interest. He's also reminding us according to our desire. Prabhupada would say, if you had a particular desire in this life and you didn't fulfill that desire and you died, and then in your next life, you take birth in a certain 
according to your karma. And then Krishna reminds you, being the super soul in the heart, oh, you had this desire that you wanted to fulfill. And therefore you pick up in your next life, trying to fulfill that same desire that you didn't fulfill in your last life, not aware that you had that desire in your last life. But Krishna, who is the indwelling super soul, reminds you, oh, this is what you wanted to do. Okay. And then he reminds you, and then he also allows you to do it. But then again, he's also giving other instructions in the heart, teaching us where we should be coming to him in devotional service. So he's the most knowledgeable. Although he sits in everyone's heart and everyone is different, he remains one at the same time he is dictating to each person accordingly. So his knowledge is complete as he gives direction to every living entity. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, he's uh, been glorified since time immemorial, and therefore he's still being glorified. Therefore his knowledge is complete and he is the most famous. Another quality of Krishna is his strength. When he was still simply a little boy of seven and a half years old, living in Vrindavan, he easily picked up this gigantic mountain known as Govardhan. The hill at that time was much larger than what a present, what the present size is. It's much, much larger then. In fact, it was miles high many miles high and many miles around, much, much bigger. Govardhan has shrunk due to the curse that was given to Govardhan by um, Palastya Muni, who cursed Govardhan that he would sink into the ground one mustard seed every day. And therefore he's gradually sinking into the ground very slowly. But what Krishna picked up was much, much bigger. And he did it so easily, he lifted it with his left hand, just to show that, you know, I have more power in my left hand to Indra, who was trying to stop his sacrifice. And you have in all of your heavenly planets, and he held it up, not only with his left hand, but with, with the smallest of all fingers on the left hand, known as the pinky, the small finger, which is known as something that is not very strong. It's the weakest of all fingers. It's more like a support finger. It doesn't do much itself. It just supports the other fingers. It helps to balance out the hand. That's all it does. It doesn't really do much. <laughs> It comes in handy sometimes when we take, we dip our finger into a fire sacrifice and we put that that mark on people's head with our pinky. So in that way it serves some purpose. But it's pretty much a uh, less important finger compared to the rest of the fingers. And so Krishna wanted to show that Tantra, how powerful he was compared to Indra, who thought he was so powerful. So, and to hold a mountain like that up with a pinky, <laughs> you know, it's not possible. No one can do it. No combination of any men, no matter how many men you put together in strength, they could never pick up the Govardhan Hill, no matter how. You could have thousands of people all around the hill who have a, a very great strength. They could never pick up that hill. And Krishna picked it up and kept it up for one full week. <laughs> so he's the reservoir of all strength. Um, wealth. Hmm. Uh, he is the source of all wealth. He's called a Dhananjaya. Dhananjaya is also a name for Arjun, meaning conqueror of wealth. But Krishna is 
when he lived in in Dwarka, he had 16,000 palaces, which were fully decorated with all opulences, along with the, the majesty that came with him being uh, Dwarkadish, the king. So he showed a little bit of his unlimited opulence on this planet when he uh, was in Dwarka. He, not only that, he created the Dwarka Island himself, and he lived with uh, such pristine quality opulence. He was known as the, the uh, conqueror of all wealth. All wealth is there. And you see people pray to the Lord, my dear Lord, I don't have a job. I need some money. Please give me some money. Please give me some wealth. And many, many times Krishna supplies and is responding to the prayers. So he's the source of all wealth. We're not talking about the wealth that mistakenly goes on as wealth today. That is paper money. Paper money is not seen in any category as wealth. It's simply a piece of paper that's stamped by the government and says this has buying power. But it doesn't have any power in the category of wealth. Real wealth is land, cows, and precious metals. So if you have, if you, whatever land you own, whatever animals you keep, horses, cows, domestic animals, and if you have grains, and if you have precious metals, these are all considered wealth. But to the, the essence of wealth really is precious metals, gold, platinum, lapis lazuli, which is hardly found on this planet, but it does exist. Lapis lazuli, emeralds, silver, rubies, diamonds, like that. These are considered wealth. If you have these things, you have some degree of wealth in proportion to how much you have. These are valuable. So Krishna is the source of all wealth. And not only that, he is the creator of all wealth. So he's the most wealthy. He's the most famous. He's the most strength. He's the most wisest. And he's the most renounced. He's not... Um, attracted to anything in this world. When we offer something to him, just like sometimes it says that we should offer, you know, someone may offer a nice, maybe do they, they do something for Krishna. They, they, maybe they build a temple for Krishna or give Krishna a million dollars or maybe even more. But Krishna doesn't need anything because all of that wealth is coming from him anyway. <laughs> he is the source of all. I mean, therefore, he's not attracted to anything in this material world. You can't give him anything and he'll be attracted to the item you give him. He's attracted to the item you give him when you give it with love because then that item has value. If it's not given with love, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, just to illustrate how, how he's renounced in both sense, he says, Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, Yomi Bhakta Panachyati, Taraham Bhakta Uparitam, Asnami, Rayatatmanaha. So he makes it clear that it's not so much the item that you give, but it's the love you give along with the item, and that it was attracts him. Therefore, he says, water, fruit, flower, leaf, all these things are attractive only when they have love. But if you offer millions and millions of dollars, and one is proud that they've given so much to God, he's not attracted to that. <laughs> Therefore, he's the most renounced. He's with 16,000 108 gopis, he's with 16,108 queens, he remains a brahmachari. 
Um, even Bhishma Devs, who was glorified as being a great brahmachari throughout his life said, compared to Krishna, he is nothing in that category. Krishna is the greatest old brahmachari because he was with so many beautiful and qualified ladies, but yet he wasn't attracted. He wasn't attracted in that sense. He was attracted to their bhakti, but not to them because of their physical beauty or qualities like that. And so, but in this world, people are attracted to these things. Therefore, they're Nobody actually has any real renunciation. And if a person does renounce in this world and doesn't take up devotional service, they remain hard hearted and very much unable to understand how to find happiness in life because renunciation without devotion is simply dry speculation. So Krishna is the most renounced. And the last is that he is the most beautiful. And this particular characteristic of Krishna's nature, his beauty is the most attractive to the devotees. We see the beautiful forms of the Lord in the deity form and we become attracted by that. To give you an example, the Bhagavatam also says that uh, the sky becomes beautiful by the presence of the full moon. And a, a woman becomes beautiful in the presence of a qualified husband. Um, so something in relation to something beautiful also becomes beautiful. That's Krishna. So devotees become beautiful when they become Krishna conscious because Krishna is all beautiful. Uh, I'll give you an example. One devotee, Prabhupada disciple, temple president of a small preaching center in America. Uh, someone made a outfit for his deities and he had deities of Gordon Atai, Jagannath Baladev, Subhadra and, and Lakshmi Nisringadev on the altar. And so he's looking at the outfit that was made and he's thinking, no, this outfit doesn't look so nice. I don't think I'm going to put it on the deities. I'm not really. But then he thought, he had second thoughts. He said, well, since they made it, I'll put it on at least once just to honor their gift. So he had it put on dressed the deities nicely with that one outfit. And then he looked after seeing the, the outfit on the deity, the outfit looked so beautiful on the deity. And he was thinking, oh, this is amazing. That outfit didn't have that attraction for me, but now it does. And then the, of course, the understanding is, as soon as he connected it with Krishna, it became attractive. <laughs> So that's Krishna. Uh, the gopis in Vrindavan are very much attracted to his beauty. Um, they can't stop thinking of him, remembering him. They remember him in his, his beautiful form in so many different ways. Uh, his lotus eyes, his sweet smile, his... Uh, his face, which is just makes the moon look like something that is ugly and disgusting. So sometimes we say that Krishna, we don't say Krishna is beautiful. We say Krishna is beauty. He is beauty and beauty gets its definition from Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is the source of all beauty and we all have that experience we are attracted to Krishna in his different forms, especially his form as Sri Krishna and Vrindavan as he stands on the altar in his threefold bending form, playing on his flute, surrounded by wonderful, beautiful ornaments and garments 
and uh, necklaces, earrings, crowns, jewelry, uh, which just enhances the quality of these items. He remains beautiful. So the beauty of Krishna is probably out of all of the six opulences that we mentioned, that beauty is the most attractive for his devotees. The devotees find the most uh, uh, influence, Krishna's influence is most on his beautiful transcendental form. Mm -hmm. And especially his lotus feet um, it says that there are 24 and a half moons on the body of Krishna. Uh, his 10 toes, his 10 fingers, that's 20. These are all considered beautiful moons. Uh, his eyebrows, his forehead, his smile. These are considered the moons on the body of Krishna. And he stands in what is called Tribanga. Tribanga Lalita. He sp stands in a threefold bending form that is unique with his feet planted in a certain way, which gives more and more attraction to his devotees as they uh, absorb the beautiful darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So uh, when Srila Prabhupada was uh, In India, the devotees from America had brought in pictures of their particular Krishna deity in their temple to show Prabhupada, and they gave it to him all in one pile, each one a photo of their deities. And Prabhupada was looking at them one after another. And then he came across Radha London Ishwara, and he said, Oh, very nice. <laughs> he also commented on Radha Madhava from Mayapur. And when he saw Kishore Kishori from Chicago, he also made some comment on his beauty, like that. Of course, those are the three that we remember Prabhupada commenting on. But Prabhupada was, you know, he could see much more than we could see. His vision of Krishna's beauty was way much than we, what we can perceive. And so Krishna reveals his beauty according to the level of our bhakti. The more bhakti, the more his beauty becomes more and more powerful and more and more exposed to us when we take his darshan. So out of all of the qualities of Krishna, his beauty is the most attractive for the devotees. Okay, these are a little bit about Krishna and his attractive features. So we can end here and see if there's any comments, calm questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for enlightening us on this topic of why Krishna is called Bhagavan and how he is complete in all six opulences. Thank you so much Maharaj. Dear devotees, if anyone has any questions, comments, realizations, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj.
We, we lost your audio. You I was there? on, yes. Okay, ah. Be begin again. Sorry, Maharaj. Um, so thank you for the explanation of the opulence is all the characteristics which defines Bhagwan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If we apply that to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm. we won't be able, to, at least externally, these, uh, can we apply these things um, or we cannot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we have, we have a, uh, I have a seminar that I give sometimes. It's called The Six Opulence of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu going through these same six by indicating different pastimes that illustrate each one. Oh yeah. It was originally done by Radhana Swami many years ago. And uh, so I picked up on it and uh, got all the details. <laughs> but it's uh, the, his six opulences are there also in Lord Chaitanya. Yeah. Strength, beauty, knowledge, renunciation, Fame, wealth. Is there any way we can have? Is there a recording, Maharaj? I would like to hear it. The seminar? Yeah. Um, maybe if you can find it in, in uh, what is that? Desire Tree. Okay. You might be able to okay. find find Radha Swami's class. That would be the very enlightening class. Mm -hmm. I gave a class, but I can't remember when, and I don't know. The only way you could possibly find it is if you check my website and see if it's there. But I don't keep any record of my classes, so. Yeah, that's okay, Maharaj. I, I, I shall try to locate it on the ISKCON desire tree. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the six opulences of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. I have. I think there was some internet problem. These characteristics, and if you find them in, you know, the so-called person or guru that you believe, then yes, he's God. But if you don't find it, then he's not God. <laughs> you have to find all six in full. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Not in partial. <laughs> Even in partial is very difficult, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely difficult. But impartial means that they are temporary. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. That was wonderful. Uh, Vrindavan Nath. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is, you mentioned about uh, Govardhan uh, pastime, where he accepted to take the sin rather than, like a curse, rather than uh, going out of uh, Vrindavan. So when we take, like many devotees take Govardhan Shila uh, now uh, in temples and in also in their home, is that okay? Like, or is this really not recommended by Prabhupada? No, you can't take over Don Sheila unless you get permission from a local sadhu there who lives on Govardhan. It's not possible. Um, only if you get permission. And that's not so easy to get permission because Giriraj doesn't, doesn't want to go. But he will go if he sees someone who has some strong bhakti. Thank you, Guru. Yeah. Thank you. It takes, it takes, yeah. We have experiences that 
we have a Govardhan Shila in New Vrindavan. We got permission for that. There are many, all the temples that have Govardhan Shilas, they're all gotten by the permission of the sadhus first. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to like take uh, with permission of like uh, local sadhu, like. Yeah, you have to find the right sadhu, not just anybody who's trying to make money. You have to find someone who's a genuine Babaji, Bab, 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 yeah, Babaji who lives in Govardhan. There are, they're there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There is one question in the chat from the is that we I have can't hear. Uh, Mother Runda, Runda the voice is so low. Sorry, Maharaj. Can you hear now, Maharaj? Is that hard? Hardly. Okay. There is a question in the chat box, Maharaj, by from Dheeraj Prabhuji. He's asking, is that we have to offer gold to keep the uh, Girira Shila? No. No, there is no there's not that's not required. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, they, you have to find the authorized worship of Govardhan, which is mentioned in the Pancharatriki system of worship, and then you understand the process. It tells you what to worship, how to worship, everything, when to worship. There's no mention about gold. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Are there any questions or comments for Maharaj? Please go ahead. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Krishna Dipti. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh, when I went to Vrindavan, I was so tempted to take the Govardhan Sheila. And uh, me and my daughter were doing the Parikrama. And then we, we thought, uh, we prayed and we took one one Govardhan Sheila and the suddenly some kids came around and they said, no, 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 Mataji, don't take it, don't take it. You can't take this Govardhan Sheila. Please put it back, please put it back. I said, okay, fine. So we put it back. Thank God we put it back. We shouldn't have a first place taken it, isn't it? Yeah, the kids were messengers from yeah. Govardhan. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, it'll be if you take over the on you you might wind up getting some bad luck <laughs> yeah that's what exactly they say then they somehow they came from nowhere there was no, nobody around and suddenly they appeared and they said no mataji please don't take it and oh, thank god you told us <laughs> yeah you, you have to have permission from a great sadhu mm -hmm. mm. Actually, we were not aware of that at that time. Afterwards, we came to know all these things. You know? ah, nice story. Just shows you that Govardhan was protecting you. I know, exactly. <laughs> I didn't think that that, that time. I, I just, I, we were so scared that why did we do this? You know, we just prayed so much. We said, Thank, so sorry, you know, we like, we shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Well, now you know. <laughs> now I know exactly. Never again. <laughs> well, if you're if you're qualified, then you should ask and see. 
just like we wanted to get a Govardhan Shila for our project in in um, in Govardhan Echo Village in just north of Mumbai, Radhana Swami sent his disciple Vishwarup to Govardhan to. <clears throat> So um, he was looking around for a Sheila mm -hmm. and he saw one, <clears throat> beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then he went searching for the sadhu and it was a lady, actually she was a lady <clears throat> who was worshiping Cobra down there. <clears throat> so he asked her, explained to her why we wanted it. We have a replica of Vrindavan in near Mumbai, and we have a replica of Govardhan Hill there, and we need Govardhan to be there present. So she said, well, I don't know. I don't know if I should let you, but we will have a test. Tonight, we'll both go to sleep, and if Govardhan appears in both our dreams, and tells us that he can go, and then he will go. Oh, nice. So that night they both went to sleep and Govardhan appeared in both of their dreams and said, I wanna go. Amazing. Yeah, and so we have that Sheila there, she's beautiful. I've seen it, Guru Maharaj, it's such a beautiful place to be there, you know, it's like amazing. Yeah. Little so that, how that Sheila got there, is, this is the story. Mm. How we got there. Yeah, mm. now I know the story. I didn't know the story that time. She didn't give right away, but she said, mm. if we both have the same dream and he wants to go, then we can go. Yeah, yeah. it's go over them, go over them Guru Maharaj's wish, isn't it? When they want to come or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the but but the eco village in Mumbai is so beautiful place, Guru Maharaj. We were yeah, there. It, it says that Vrindavan manifests itself in ten places throughout the globe. Mm -hmm. So there is the original Vrindavan, and then there's nine other places where there are replicas of the original Vrindavan, which are as good as the original Vrindavan, and that's one of them. So that is one of the 10 places in the world that if you live there, you're living in Vrindavan. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was so coincident that we went to Vrindavan first and then we went to Bombay and then they say that, oh, this is a nice place, uh, eco, uh, go with an eco village if you want to go and visit there. So we visited eco village after being to actual Vrindavan as well. So it was twice and it was the month of Kartik as well. So we did the Arti, both the places and everything. It was amazing journey. Yeah, he's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I can do it, I don't know if I can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, uh, do we have uh, our uh, techie person there? Or I can put up a picture of that Govarda uh, for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, I'll make you co-host, Guru Maharaj. You can share this. Yeah, give me the, and then I'll go to my, so what do I do? Um, you just open the document, uh, the photo um, in, on your computer, Guru Maharaj, and share the screen, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. Now let me get to the photo. Okay. Coming up here. Mm -hmm. Now let's see. Oh, let me see here. We'll be, okay. Okay, I'll give you two beautiful pictures. First, I'll give you the morning picture. Here he is. 
Okay, I went to the photo now. Put it on the share. I put it on the share screen now, right? Yes, Raj. You have to click on share screen and then you have to select that photo. Okay. Share screen and here we go. Here you go. There he is. Beautiful Gunash. Very nice. Yeah, he's really beautiful. Okay. Very, very sweet. <laughs> Now I'll show you another photo, which is his um, night outfit. Okay. No, this is not the night outfit, but this is another one. Um, let's see here. A sheer screen. Gurmaraj, you have to stop this uh, photo sh uh, sharing and then you have to click again, Gurmaraj. Okay, let me... Oh, um, I seem to be stuck here. Uh, let's see, okay. All right, now can I do it? Yes, Gurmaraj. Now you have to click on share screen again and select the other photo. Okay, here you go. Close up. Yes, good enough. Yes. Okay. Very beautiful. Okay, good enough. So beautiful. Yeah, it's very personal. There's one more photo. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, uh, let me see. I think. Um, maybe that's all I have is those two photos. Yeah. Yeah, mm, that's the only two I have. But that last one is really nice. He is beautiful, Gurmaraj. Yeah, so that's the one that agreed to go, to come there. <laughs> You want to see Govardhan Hill in Echo Village? I can show you that. Yes, please. Here you go. Uh, I have to unshare okay. the other screen. Yeah, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There he is. That's Govardhan Hill there. You can see the rocks resemble the original Govardhan. Yes, it does. Yeah. You know how we got those rocks? <laughs> no. We were looking when Radha Swami said to his one of his senior devotees, find rocks for so we can make Govardhan. <laughs> and so he went run, running all over looking Finally, he came to one man and the man said, you know, I got these rocks I want to get rid of. So maybe if you want, you can take them. When he saw the rocks, he was amazed. They're the same kind of rocks that they're at Govardhan. And so by Krishna's arrangement, we got enough rocks to build a beautiful Govardhan hill. So this is called the face of Govardhan. It's on the opposite side of Giriraj. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were wondering then how how did you manage to get these rocks when we went visited there over the Nico village? But it's, we thought it's another, came in there. It's another it. mystical story how Krishna arranged for this farmer who had all these rocks he didn't know what to do with. Amazing. With, and he just said, if you can take them away, it's they're yours. And so we arranged to to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Krishna knows everything. He can do anything. Yeah, that's Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. Guru Maharaj, when are you coming to London? Uh, when is London coming to me? 
<laughs> in other words, when is well, London going to let me in? They don't, they're not letting me in yet. I think it is opening up, Guru Maharaj. So hopefully, come for yeah. London Ratyatra, please. They said on the June 21st, they're going to reconsider. So let's see. Yeah. So in August, in August it's the London Ratyatra. So it'll be nice to have you here, please. London Rathiatra is so nice. I like it. It is, yes. How do I get out of the share screening? <laughs> stop share. Click on the oh, stop the, share. Okay. On the top it is, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. If anybody wants to hire a computer operator, the last person in the world you would ask is me. <laughs> 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 Why would you do that, Guru Maharaj? You are doing much better job than that. Because <laughs> I don't even, sometimes I even forget how to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Guru Maharaj, you're operating our minds. Why do you want to operate the computer? Forget the computer. You do what you're doing is the best. <laughs> well, I'm showing you Govardhan, therefore it's the best. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Krishna, Prabhupada, Glusti, Guru Maharaj. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the wonderful talk, Guru Maharaj, about Govardhan and uh, Krishna's beauty and uh, how Krishna accepts our offerings, basically, all the time. We've offered it with love. It's just so nice. It was really nice hearing that. Uh, and how you explain, you know, talked about Krishna's lotus feet and 24 different half moons in Krishna's body. Everything, it was so beautiful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, that's the best subject. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's, not, it's practically the only subject. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And I want to let you know, Guru Maharaj, about one more thing about uh, Dipti. Is Dipti is the one she brought me to Krishna consciousness about 10 years back. So I'm very grateful that, you know, because of her, I'm in this moment. She used to call me for home satsang and everything. She used to take me to manor. She always used to push me, you know, towards Krishna. So it just really, I'm very grateful to Dipti that uh, she got me in this moment, basically, because of her, I'm here. Mm. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Very she's, your, she's your guru. Yes, she's <laughs> definitely my guru, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Oh, Guru Maharaj, you know, it was Anjali's wish. That's why she succeeded so much. Look at her. She's initiated. I'm not. <laughs> you are beyond initiation. You I, have been, I, I want been initiated. To, but... <laughs> I want to, but it, I, I'm so glad that she is initiated and she is doing so well. I'm so, so happy about her. Yeah, we all are happy, <laughs> including... Yeah. Including the, the entire London Yatra is happy. Vrindavan is happy, Guru Maharaj. And the London Yatra is now peaceful. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, we can't wait. Archana, you have a. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, very beautiful lecture today. Um, you started with explaining who actually is Bhagavan. And, you know, you explained uh, the six opulences uh, which Krishna exhibits to fullest. Um, uh, uh, and uh, you told about 24 and a half moons on body of Krishna. Um, uh, so that was something new I learned today, Guru Maharaj. So are these, um, um, I, I, know, I, have, I know that toes, the nails of Krishna's toes are, are uh, as effulgent as sun and moons. So is, is this like a literally like, um, like yeah. the shine or what yeah, is it? it? Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's like the moonshine coming from his toenails. Yeah. <laughs> these moons are actually his nails. <laughs> On his toes. <laughs> yeah, and then you said fingers, ten fingers, two eyebrows, forehead, and smile. 
the smile. I, you can find it in um, Nectar of Devotion. I know that's where it's, that's where you can find it, but I'm not exactly sure where, but it's in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. And I just... Uh, I think there's want... a whole chapter called... There's, yeah. there's a chapter called uh, Krishna's Beauty. Yes. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. And I just... Uh, wanted to share something that I heard uh, since we were talking about uh, qualities of uh, Krishna, Krishna's opulences. I just wanted to share uh, something that I heard in the lecture um, um, that Krishna is known as uh, Smita Krishna uh, because his smile is natural. He does, he, he's always smiling. So um, he is smiling even when, um, you know, Shishupal was uh, um, blaspheming him, he is smiling when he talks to Arjuna. Um, so that was something very uh, beautiful, and I just remembered when you were talking about the smile and qualities of Krishna. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, there's a nice verse by Bill Mongo Thakur which describes the different uh, beauty of Krishna, and then when it gets right down to the essence, it says his face is the most beautiful. But even more beautiful is the smile upon his face. So that is that is the the ultimate principle of Krishna's beauty, his smile. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even imagine. Yeah, very sweet. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you so much. Sri Krishna Bhagavan Ki Jai. Jai. Sri Devi, you have a your hand up. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Thank you so much for this beautiful class on the opulences of Krishna. As mm -hmm. you're thinking about Krishna knowing past, present, future, seated in our hearts, I was thinking about does Krishna, of course, Krishna is the best well-wisher of everyone and he's always directing us towards all good himself but when he knows that we are going to do something bad why doesn't he stop us from doing it because he knows it's bad for us he reminds you that it's he reminds you that it's don't do it but if you don't listen then you do it so Krishna's yeah, yeah. always the he's, yeah, he's reminding you, but you're, you're not paying attention. Right, right. So how do we become more attentive when Krishna is trying to tell us something? Well, it says the more you control your mind and senses, the more you can hear Krishna within the heart. The mind and senses are fully controlled. Super soul is already reached. Then happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold appear all the same. So that's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter. So only when the mind and senses are controlled can you come in contact with Krishna within the heart. So you have to practice mind and sense control. And then every time your mind and senses, senses reach full control, you can hear Krishna right at that point. Sometimes you go in and out of that consciousness. You, all of a sudden you're controlled, you're focused, and you can hear Krishna. But most of the time we're always looking outward. That's why we have to practice more and more concentrated meditation. Prayer helps us to go deeper into our own consciousness, where it becomes more, Krishna becomes more available. Mm -hmm. Mind and sense control. Thank you. Guru. Yeah, complete. Yeah. It's in the Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter, verse number uh, seven. Thank you so much, Guru. Okay, thank you. So we can stop here. And tomorrow we are with the group in Charlotte at the earlier time again. And this is at. Uh, 120, I'm sorry, 1220 UK time.
which will push everybody's schedule back. Just this, just this one day a week on Thursday, we're always on that earlier time period. And that's the verse, Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, seventh chapter, verse number 12. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time and association today and enlightening us on this topic. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful nectarian association.